Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I ask then, has God totally rejected and disowned his people? Of course not. Why I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. No, God has not rejected and disowned his people, whose destiny he has marked out, appointed, and foreknown from the beginning. Do you not know that the scripture says, Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed their prophets and they have demolished your altars. I alone am left and they seek my life. But what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed their knee to Baal. So too at the present time there is a remnant, a small believing majority, selected and chosen by God's grace, which is God's favor in his graciousness. There is always a small remnant that God leaves. He always preserves a small remnant and waits for their moment to pop up. <coughs> And shine. We don't have to worry. God's gonna, He's going to reserve a remnant. I think this year, as we were coming to the end of the year, I began to see a pattern in some things. And I kind of mentioned this, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. There was a group of people that I have looked at as leaders for years. They were people that were in leadership, um, youth pastors, worship leaders different people we had looked to and I saw them walk away from their faith this year <coughs> literally pronounced that they were walking away from their faith not only leaving their callings but to literally leave the faith and that really my heart sunk I wasn't angry I was saddened to my core it was a deep sorrow there was a grief there it felt like something had died and I literally was like, God, why? And the Lord told me, he said, you sorrow, but all this is, is I am preparing a remnant. I'm preparing a people. And though they may feel small, because sometimes I feel like the church is so small. The numbers have gotten tinier. And there's not as many people who profess their walk anymore. A lot of people, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. That just means you're American in our culture you know i mean they just don't even understand uh -huh. and yet you sit back and go god how many really is there of us we just feel so small but what can god do with small he does it all the time all the time all the time yeah he uses the small it's not a bad thing and i found in isaiah 1 9 and this is what it said except the lord of hosts had left unto us a very small, small remnant we should have been as Sodom, and we would have been as Gomorrah. Sometimes in the small, there is a, there is more clarity and more vision. Sometimes in the small, there is more purity. Even if God had allowed them to be in big in numbers, there could have been more problems with that. Mm -hmm. And so what they were saying is, but God kept us as a small remnant, and what he did is he kept us pure. Yeah. He, he kept us. So I don't think it's always a bad thing that the church feels small, but we are not insignificant. That's right. Just because we may be small in numbers, and we might be few in fabric, there it doesn't mean that we're, we're few in our walk or in our faith or in how we function in this world. The church is great and mighty. But God has a remnant, and there truly is a remnant that's being called out and separated. And, I, and I've said this back at the beginning of the year, that line that people used to walk between serving the Lord and not choosing to is just getting finer. It used to be this big black line, and you could kind of ride it. Now you can't ride it. You are going to have to make a choice. Uh -huh. that's right. there really is, yep. The fence has disappeared. That's right. You're going to have to choose the walk. You're going to have to choose it. So there is a true remnant church. And what does God do with remnants? Oh, he does amazing things with remnants. He does amazing things with leftovers. So what is the remnant church? A couple things to remind you about what the remnant church is. It's a Bible-believing church that stands on the rock of God's word alone. Mm -hmm. Not on the traditions of men, but stands completely on his word. John 17, 17 says that he sanctifies them through his word. 
of truth. The remnant church is people who search the scriptures daily looking for truth. John 5, 39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. We're to search the scriptures. You shouldn't just be learning when you come to church. You have the rest of the week to eat. If the only time you eat is once a week, you're going to be starving. You're just going to be starving. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, you're going to be starving if that's the only time that you eat is once a week. There's no way I can give you a big enough meal to sustain you for the week. You can't do it. You need to eat more than that. So we all have to feed ourselves. We're required. But see, that's part of being the church, is that we are the church. We're to require ourselves to constantly seek the scriptures and have our own relationship with, with the Savior. Amen. The remnant church will have Jesus at the center of their teaching and at their lives. I love the scripture in the Old Testament that talks about teaching your children the way. When you walk, when you lay down, when you sit at your table. Christianity is not just something you do because you go to church and you say you're a Christian. Christianity is a walk that you walk, talk, live, breathe. When my kids come to me and say, Mom, I'm not feeling good, the first thing I should do is reach out and pray for them. Uh -huh. Before I run to the nursing cabinet and go into nursing mode. Why? Uh -huh. Because I need to teach them the way. I need to teach them. When my kids bring a situation to me and say, Mom, I'm struggling with this in school and this is what I'm going through. My first thing is to look at them spiritually and think, how can I help them spiritually? I pray over them every single day that the Holy Spirit would bring back to the remembrance the knowledge that they need when they're in school mm -hmm. and help them. And I was talking with my son actually a couple weeks ago because he was struggling with something. And... I said, you got the Holy Spirit, ask him for your help, his help mm -hmm. when you're in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. See, that's how you teach your kids the way. Everything goes and points back to their walk and their relationship with God and the Holy Spirit. What can he teach them? What can he lead them mm -hmm. to? And so this is what we're supposed to do is, and we should walk and talk it. Now some people, and I had one of my kids one time, Mom... Why do you always do that? Because they asked me a question. Mom, can I go do this? I said, I have to pray about it. Well, why do you always have to pray about it? <laughs> Some kids don't like that. You know why? Because they knew God was going to say no. That's why. And it was funny. And I was like, what? You scared God's going to say no? Probably. But the point was, it's teaching them to be in the way. Teaching them to make their decisions going to the Holy Spirit and asking for guidance, we don't just make our choices because we make them. We ask God. We seek His guidance. We want His wisdom. We don't just do it because I feel it in my gut. Mm -hmm. Listen, your heart will lead you the wrong direction. I know the, the world tells you to follow your heart. You guys, I've heard it. I was hearing it this week because it was on every Hallmark movie talked about that. Follow your heart. <laughs> Oh, Lord, Jesus, help me not scream scripture at him. Your heart is deceitful above all things. It will lead you the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You don't follow your heart. You follow the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and what he tells you to do. You don't follow. Just because, listen, we all get discouraged. But don't walk away from your faith because of a moment of discouragement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you know that we all question? We all ask God why. The drama team did that song a couple weeks ago, um, Why God? You guys, God doesn't get mad at us because we ask him why. Job asked why. God didn't get mad at him for asking why. A child asks why. You answer their question the best you can. Sometimes the answer is, it just is that way. Rain falls on the just and the unjust. It just happens. One day we'll understand it better by and by, right? We're going to understand it on the other side so differently because we only see in part. Mm -hmm. But it's okay to ask God, but don't leave your faith mm -hmm. That's right. because you question something. Get the answer. Find it somehow. Go searching. 
And listen, I'm going to tell you, there is a wrong way to search and there's a right way to search. Mm -hmm. If you're searching for truth and you're trying to find it in Buddha who is dead, you're not going to find the answers you're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you're searching for truth and you think you're going to go find it in Muhammad who is dead, mm -hmm. you ain't going to find it. But if you look in the word of God through Jesus Christ who is alive, uh -huh. then you will find truth. Because he is truth. Yeah. Yep. And a lot of people, well, I went and went and went searching here and that. The problem is that if you go searching outside of those, of course you're not going to find truth, their version of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their version. It ain't going to lead you where you want to go. It's not going to lead you down that fine path that leads. There's a wide path that leads to destruction, and there's a narrow path that leads directly to the Father. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what Oprah and all these other people want to say about all paths lead to God. Not according to the word of God, it don't. That's right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there's one way, and I lead to the Father. Amen. That's right. It's through him. You're not going to find truth. Look at, listen, I've read other cultures and religions. I have sought them out. You're not going to find truth. What you're going to find in Jesus. That's right. In, in the other religions. You will not find it. Every religion I have looked up, and I probably can quote a dozen at you if I really wanted to take the time. But every religion I studied and every single one of them I looked at, I will tell you one thing. You had to earn your way. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You had to strive, work at it, and earn your way to do, to get anything. Yeah, and you are nothing but a speck of dust to them. They don't care about you. Buddha didn't die for you. Mm -hmm. Muhammad didn't give his life for you. They don't care about you at all. At all. Mm -hmm. And what I always saw in Christianity was, first of all, it was done for me. Yeah. Second of all, it was done out of love. And I don't have to do a thing except for receive it. it was that was, that's huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is no other religion that preaches that. Not, not even comes close. Everything else you have to strive and work at very hard to get it. Mm -hmm. And you still can't attain it. Because yeah. yeah. nobody can. Yeah. It's impossible. It's all because they didn't want to see Jesus Christ as the only way.